Okay, this demo is going to cover how to warp a tab loom. Here I have a pre-made chipboard tab loom. You can see all the tabs up here. They were already cut for me, which is pretty nice. Um, this just came in a sheet like this. This isn't something that I necessarily picked out for its size. Um, I could also make my own loom out of cardboard if I want something that's a little bit different. Uh, but this is what I have here, so it's what I'm going to use for my loom. Um, I've already decided I'm probably only going to use part of this. I'm not going to make something that covers this whole area. So I'm probably, at least for my loom, I'm going to cover and warp probably about this much-ish, give or take a bit. Um, I have to decide what I want for my warp threads though. So it kind of depends on what I want my overall design to be. A couple of things that I've been thinking about um, are maybe using something much finer like this. This is actually crochet thread. It's very fine. I thought about using this um, but ultimately what I've decided is that I think my final design is going to be a little bit chunkier and a little bit heavier and I don't think that this fine or this light of thread is really going to go well. So I'm going to set this aside and uh, maybe it'll show up somewhere in my design, but I don't think it's going to be suitable for the warp. On the other hand, um, I thought about using yarn. This is just plain, um, I think this is like red heart yarn or something. It's that ubiquitous yarn you find at fabric stores. Um, I thought about using this. However, I think that this is actually going to be a little bit too big. Um, I don't think that it's necessarily going to fit in well with my tabs. So I'm going to set this aside again. I think it's going to show up somewhere else in my design, but this is going to be a little bit too big for the warp. There are all kinds of different things you can use for warp though. Um, since I'm kind of working with limited supplies, what I'm going to use is a hank of embroidery floss. Depending on your design, you might want to use something that's a little bit more neutral. Um, I've had this kind of orangey yellow embroidery floss, you know, knocking around in my sewing kit for a while, and I think it's time for it to come out and be used. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go, but I'm going to have some fun with it, and that's probably the most important part. So the cool thing about a tab loom is that um, it's really easy. It's really easy to warp. So because I like to weave from the top of my design up, which also means I'm working from the bottom of my loom towards the top, um, I'm actually going to take my warp thread and I'm going to start it at the bottom. So I'm going to put this in between one of the tabs. Let me pull this to the so you can see it. Put it, kind of muscle it in, and I am one, two, three, four spots over, and then I'm going to pull this to one, two, three, four spots over on top. Now before I really get rocking and rolling, I should mention about tension. It's really easy to kind of try to like yank these threads into place. I don't want to do that because if I have this strung way too tightly all the way across, it's going to make my loom, such as it is, bow. Um, and that's not good. It'll cause some problems later on. So I'm going to adjust this. Right, This is going to be too loose. I don't want it, you know, waving around in the wind. I just want it tense enough so that it's straight, but not so much that it's bowing my loom. You guys can see there's a fair amount of slack on this. Then to do the next side, I'm going to come 
around the back and into the next tab. And try not to tangle my embroidery floss too much. Again, I'm not, this would be full tension. I'm gonna have it be a little bit slack. This would be too loose. You guys can see, you can see the bends. I don't want that. Getting around the back. Oops, excuse me. And into the next tab. Um, I bent that tab pretty badly, but the tabs next to it are going to hold it in place, which is one of the benefits of a tab loom. Again, I'm going to put that here, wrap it around the back. And continue on warping my loom. Sometimes your tabs might not be cut all the way. That's okay. You can just kind of work to separate them. Try not to, try not to let things get too tangly. Um, I'm really terrible with getting my embroidery floss tangled. And I will just continue on like this until I've filled up the majority of my loom. Now, the important takeaway here is that you should have an even number of warp threads. Okay, so all of this together and as it goes across, you need to have an even number so that you can alternate over under across your pattern. So when you're going this way, you should go over under, over under, and then when you come back, you'll, it'll be the reverse, which will give you a nice pattern between the two. I also tend to find that um, an even number, but a multiple of three works really well. Um, we'll talk more about designs in a later video and things you can, different patterns you can weave. Um, but an even number, but a multiple of three is especially good. So um, I will not subject you to watching me warp the rest of this loom, um, but I'm going to keep going back and forth between these tabs probably until I reach, I don't know, about here or so, because this is, this is how big I want my weaving to be.